The execution of the Modoc leaders at Fort Klamath is uh, possibly the most difficult story that we have to tell, because um, we we don't want to claim that we understand it fully at this point. Uh, we know that it was somewhat controversial, the fact that the military conducted the trial of the four Modoc leaders, that um, uh, army soldiers and officers who fought against the Modocs and the lava beds uh, were part of the trial. Um, the jury that considered uh, the charges, and so it was uh, unfair in so many obvious ways. So the trial, is, as we look at it now, could be uh, largely considered a, a sham. Uh, it was held more or less by a military tribunal, and uh, and which which is something that that you can't really do because they're not the Modocs were never quite. Uh, enemy combatants. They were they were uh, they were not military personnel, and they couldn't be tried as such. And um, a lot of the proceedings of the trial were, um, if you look at them from a legal standpoint, were um, ill-founded. Kim Puash, Captain Jack, and the others. Uh, there were a total of six who were sentenced to death, sent to President Grant. He confirmed four of the sentences and commuted two of the others. He confirmed the sentences for Captain Jack, uh, Black Jim, Boston Charlie, and Sconch and John. And Barncho and Solux were uh, sent down to Alcatraz on life sentences. But as for uh, the other four who were condemned, who had been sentenced to hang, that sentence was carried out in the start of October in 1873. The four graves were located right in the, near the center of the parade grounds of the fort, and so it seemed as though they really wanted to make a demonstration of the fact that these four men and their people were subjugated, were uh, alienated from their homeland. You know, rumors quickly spread that the bodies weren't actually in the graves, um, but we don't have any confirmation of that. Uh, we do know that they were decapitated. The skulls ended up uh, going back to Washington, D.C., and eventually were in uh, the collection of the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, they were returned to a, a Modoc tribal member um, some years ago, uh, but not um, placed with the bodies. Uh, as far as we know, uh, the bodies are still there. Our presumption is that they are real graves, and until that's proven otherwise, we'll of course continue to treat those four graves as if they are the real graves. Uh, we know that there are graves there, uh, grave shafts at least, because uh, ground penetrating radar was done by the University of Oregon uh, to confirm that. Um, and so, uh, you know, we treat that as if it's uh, because it is sacred ground. The government disposed of the property in 1890. It went to uh, the family that had the land surrounding the fort and stayed in that family for decades. And the graves were basically forgotten about. Uh, all the buildings from Fort Klamath disappeared. And it wasn't until a few decades later, maybe in the 1950s, that a few people went out and tried to find those graves. And we know that there were Modoc folks who uh, went and visited the graves, uh, found the indentations in the ground where the graves were. Uh, the county acquired that property in 1966. Uh, it's really um, a, a somber task for us as a county museum to be the caretaker for those graves because the story of the Modoc War and the execution of the four Modoc leaders is, a, as far as we're concerned, it's a story of national significance. Um, and yet it's a somewhat unknown story. And so uh, we take it very seriously to protect those graves and to tell the story as responsibly as we can. Mm -hmm.